Good afternoon. I'm Rongling Li. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at ICIE. Actually, I started work here beginning of this year. So uh, the presentation I'm going to give is uh, uh, an overview of my current uh, research activity. Um, I'm involved in two uh, smart cities and the smart buildings uh, project, which is uh, Energy Lab know-how and uh, cities. Uh, my work is focused on building energy flexibility. Uh, I believe for most of you, uh, this concept is quite new. Therefore, I will give an introduction uh, on this concept and uh, an introduction of my current work. Um, why building energy flexibility is an important research topic. Well, we have to go back to see the Danish energy plan by 2035. Electricity and heating supply will be covered by uh, renewable energy. By 2050, all the energy supply will be covered by renewable energy. If we have a look, um, these three renewable energy is currently uh, being used in a larger scale, which is solar power, wind power, and biomass. I believe most people know that wind power is being integrated and used in Denmark very successfully. Uh, in fact, in 2015, wind power energy generation already reached 42% of uh, energy consumption in Denmark. In 2020, the number is expected to be 50%. And this graph is a typical month in 2020. We can see that the red curve is energy demand of the month, and the green part is uh, wind power generation. We can see that energy demand has pretty regular daily patterns. However, the wind power generation is very fluctuating. For example, if we have a look at some days, such as this day, the wind power generation is much less than energy demand, but on some other days, such as these two days, power generation is much higher than energy demand. This is very different from conventional power generation. In conventional power plant, energy generation is always planned according to energy demand. So demand and generation is matched. However, in this case, we cannot control wind, and we cannot control wind generation. So we have to think the other way, whether we can control demand to make energy demand match energy generation. This is the basic concept of demand flexibility. We make energy demand more flexible to match the energy generation. Good news is most buildings have the ability to become energy flexible. This is an example of a building tested by DTI. The graph on the left shows the energy uh, demand of a day. By using a demand response program, uh, the energy demand can be changed uh, into more flat pattern. And by using building thermal mass and building energy system, those are the um, components and energy system that can, of, can be flexible. In commercial buildings, heating, cooling system, ventilation, pumps, refrigerator has potential to become energy flexible. For example, you can adjust the temperature setting, adjust the floor rate to, uh, uh, to change the energy consumption of those systems. In dwellings, white gold, such as the dishwasher, washing machine, heating system, heat pump, and the EVs have potential to be flexible. For example, EV can be charged when wind power generation is at the peak. So based on this concept, a few pilot projects has been developed in Denmark. For example, Energy Lab know-how demonstration project is one of, the, one of it. Uh, in this project, smart charging, energy storage system, heating and cooling grids, also flexible buildings and users are uh, 
investigated in order to provide the flexibility for energy grid to use. Um, our focus is on energy flexible buildings and users. In energy flexible buildings, smart appliances and uh, energy management system will be applied in order to collect information of uh, energy grid, such as uh, energy price, and help the users to make a decision whether it's a good timing to use energy or not, whether it's good to wait for one hour or two to start to use dishwasher or washing machine. Therefore, the user behavior will need to be changed also, the daily routine will also need to be changed. Um, this is one of the research topics that we are currently working on. A field study is being investigated in know-how to investigate uh, user interaction with the smart grid technologies and the uh, user impact on energy flexibility potential of buildings. Uh, this building, which equipped with uh, smart meters, uh, app, um, mobile app, home energy management systems uh, is uh, our case study building. Uh, we are currently working uh, on preliminary study and the data analysis. Hopefully very soon we can have uh, more insights to uh, share with you. Um, with the electricity grid become more and more sustainable and green, this reheating grid uh, is under pressure to reduce greenhouse gas emission and uh, to avoid the use peak load power plants because peak load power plants normally use fossil fuel. How can building energy flexibility in this case be used for this reheating network? Uh, this reheating network for uh, sub, uh, after substation it can connect to hundreds of buildings. Each building has a different amount of energy flexibility. Therefore, in order to utilize such energy flexibility, we are calculating and quantifying energy flexibility of each building type in order to integrate building energy flexibility into large scale. Um, there is one more issue we need to uh, face, which is how do we use energy flexibility? Can we develop an easy to use indicator? This graph shows the result of our current uh, research. Um, flexibility in this case is time durance, time period, in which the building can sustain thermal comfort without heat supply. Uh, we found that energy flexibility in this case correlate to outdoor door temperature and the solar irradiance. Based on this result, we can see that we using weather forecast data, this reheating uh, network company can actually use energy flexibility provided by each different type of buildings. Um, to summary, I uh, give a brief introduction on this topic, also a brief uh, introduction about my current research activity uh, from both user perspective and the uh, heat, district heating grid perspective. Thank you.